this is one of our this is our worst one right here this is road 072 um and it is it is water all in here <laughs> Standing in front of a map of the RM, Reeve Carmen Sterling runs her finger from property to property. Areas in the Weyburn area that are still underwater. So uh, certainly we don't have roads underwater this year, so there is an improvement. But we're just as challenged in some areas as we were where there was water, just having the water up against the roads. Cutting through the fields still deep in water, the pavement buckles as waves lap at the road's edge. We have just major soft spots where we're restricting access for vehicles. We have a, a spot in the RM that the school bus can't even get down because the road is so soft. Down one of those roads is Chad Crane's farm. There's, you know, a few hundred acres with a few feet and a few hundred acres with several feet of water and a few hundred acres with, you know, significant <laughs> depths of water deeper than I would want to even think about right now. He was flooded out last year. And while there has been some improvement, he guesses 20% of his land won't see a crop again this summer. We could face another disaster real quick here because it wouldn't take that much moisture over the course of the next few weeks to put us right back to last year. The Saskatchewan Watershed Authority is tasked with managing what has of lately been the unmanageable. They keep an eye on water in the province, controlling the flow through sporadic dams. Glendon Boldy is the manager of the Watershed Authority in the southeast. Continues to be areas where, you know, there is standing water. Sloughs still have water in place. Uh, it, it depends on how we move forward here uh, and uh, what the year brings. But considering that some fields are still submerged under as much as eight feet of water, it would take a lot of sustained sunshine to return to normal. And if, as Chad Crane fears, more rain comes instead, Moldy concedes more may need to be done. Uh, last year there were some communities that did uh, construct uh, uh, flood control works, which include drainage ditches, and there may be uh, additional ones again this year. So far, Moldy can't say if there are any actual plans for such construction. And that answer isn't good enough for Beverly Lissefeld. Her family farm is just outside of Lampman, just northeast of Estevan. The town itself sits uncomfortably close to miles of standing water. When I was here last June, sandbags were being put down to hold the water back. And the bags and water still sit just a few yards from the edge of town. Out in the center of this unwelcomed lake is the Lissafeld farm. We raised our kids there. We, we have the most beautiful shelter belt that we planted. 55, 60 foot evergreens that are falling over now. Oh, which may not sound like a lot to someone, but our yard was our pride and joy. Since last June, she and her husband have bounced from place to place while the water keeps a hold on the farm they've owned for 30 years. The only tenants are the two dogs they couldn't take with them. Beverly's husband gets into the home by ATV only a few times a week to check on the pumps and feed the animals. They'd hoped to be home this spring, but the flooding from last year still seems far from over. Natalie Geddes, News Talk Radio in Lampman. How high is the water, mama? Two feet high and rise. How high is the water, papa? She said it's two feet high and rise. But we can make it to the road in a homemade boat Cause that's the only thing we got left that'll float It's all